Hey guys, welcome back to part 4 of the Kotlin tutorial. In this video we want to continue writing code. So if you have closed IntelliJ IDEA, go ahead and start it. And it should automatically open your last project. If it doesn't or if it opened the wrong project because you have created another one meanwhile, then you can go up here to File and open the correct project from this Open Recent list. If you can't find it in this list, then you can also click on Open and just open the folder of this project directly. Okay, let's start this video with the solution of the homework from the last video which was create a second function that prints hello kotlin and call it from the main function. So below the closing curly brace of our main function, we write fun, then we give this function a name. I'm gonna call it say hello kotlin. And again, we can't put any white spaces in here. And instead, each new word should start with a capital letter, just like our file name. But the difference is that the first letter is lowercase. So this is what we call camel case, whereas our file name with the uppercase first letter is called Pascal case. And these uppercase first letters are also called camel hums. Okay, after the name we put an empty pair of parentheses, because it doesn't take any input, and then a pair of curly braces. And in here we also want to call print line and pass hello Kotlin. And then we want to call it from our main function. And when we start typing the name of the function, IntelliJ will already give us a suggestion, and when we press enter, we get this function call. By writing the name of the function and a pair of parentheses, which again is empty because this function doesn't take any input, whereas the print line function takes input, which we had to pass between these parentheses. But don't get confused by this right now, we will take a closer look at functions later, and then you will also learn how you can pass data to them or get data back. So when we start this, we get this output, hello world, hello Kotlin. And the second part of the homework was to see what happens when we just call print instead of print line. So let's start it again. And in the future, I will just use this shortcut here, Control Shift F10 on Windows. If you are on Mac, then use whatever shortcut it shows you, or just press this button like we did it before. And our new code prints hello world, hello Kotlin, but all in one line. And this is the difference between print and print line. Print doesn't add a line break. Okay, that's it for the homework. I'm gonna revert this. Again, we will take a closer look at functions in the later part. In this video, we will take a look at variables. So let's say in our program after hello world, we want to print my name is and the name of the user. So Florian in my case. When we start this, this will print this exact text. Nothing special. But of course, like this, our program is pretty inflexible because it can always just print, my name is Florian. What we instead want is something like this. My name is, insert username. And to replace this part dynamically, we can use variables. You can imagine variables as containers that hold data values. So this can, for example, be a name that the user typed into our app, but it can also be something like the result of a mathematical calculation or the result of a database query that we want to store and then use later, or just some value that we want to use in multiple different places, but have a single place where we can change it. And with a variable, we can store a value in the memory of the computer and then give it a name so we can refer to it later. This is of course a very simplified explanation. We will learn about it in more detail later, but it will work for now. And to declare such a variable, we type in var, which stands for variable, then we have to give it a name, for example, username. Again, we use camel case, if it's multiple words. After that, we make a colon, space, and then we specify the type of this variable. We want this to store a string. So we write string with capital S, and we assign it with the equal sign to quotation marks, because this way we create a string, Florian. To store this string in this variable, the name of the variable should also be somewhat descriptive. So if you want to store the username, then you shouldn't call it A or B or something like that. And after we have created our variable like this, we could replace its value with another string like this. But what we could not do is trying to put a number in here, because we said that this variable is of type string and numbers are not strings. Character sequences are strings. And this is enforced because Kotlin, just like Java, is a so-called statically typed programming language. This means the type of a variable is checked at compile time, whereas so-called dynamically typed languages only check the type of a variable at runtime, when the program is already running. 
They both have benefits and downsides. One benefit of statically typed languages is that we usually get less bugs and errors. Because the compiler already makes sure that we don't try to do stuff that doesn't make sense for this particular type. For example, it doesn't make sense to do mathematical operations on text. So the compiler won't let us do something like 20 plus username. Or in more complex examples, it wouldn't let us use a button object to play music, for example. So we delete this line. And then we can replace insert username for our variable like this, dollar sign, and the name of the variable. This is a placeholder, which will be replaced by our variable at runtime. And when we run this, it still prints hello world, my name is Florian, but this time we get this name from the variable. Of course the effect here is still the same. It still prints Florian in any case because we wrote this name directly into our code. But in a real app this could be a user input for example. And in Java we couldn't do this with these placeholders. There we had to do it like this. My name is plus variable name. And again, as a beginner, you don't have to understand these comparisons to the Java language. They are not important to follow this tutorial. But they are still good to know even if you don't have any Java background. Okay, so let's change this back. And add a second variable. This one is for the age. Which we don't want to store as a string, but as a number. There are different types of numbers, but the most common one is int, which stands for integer, which is a whole number. But we will take a closer look at different data types in the next video. For this video, string and integer will suffice. And then we set this to a number. And just like the username, we can add this to our string with a placeholder. And when we start this, It prints, hello world, my name is Florian, I'm 28 years old. Java developers will also have noticed that we write int with a capital I, whereas in Java we use a lowercase i. Again, we will take a closer look at this in the next video where we talk about data types. And with our placeholders here, we can also do a bit more complicated stuff. For example, we can say, in two years, I'll be placeholder curly brace h plus 2 and the period outside of this placeholder and when we run this it writes out in two years i'll be 30. this was just an example we can do more complex stuff between these curly braces we will come back to that later for now let's take a look at this part up here again as you can see this looks very noisy our work keywords have this mustard colored background the variable names themselves are underlined, which seems very obtrusive, and the types are grayed out. So why do we have so much different formatting up here? This is because the IDE tries to tell us a few things. When we hover over var, we see a warning, variable is never modified and can be declared immutable using val, and the underline refers to the same thing. Because if we know that we don't want to change the value of a variable later, we should tell that the compiler because this way we can avoid that we accidentally change the value of a variable that was never meant to be changed. So h is a value that is likely to change later. But my name will always stay the same. So we shouldn't declare username as var, we should declare it as val instead. Val stands for value and it is just a variable which can't be reassigned to a different value later. So before we could set our username to a different string. But now we get an error here. Val cannot be reassigned. Only vars can be reassigned. And this wouldn't even compile. So if we would try to start this, it wouldn't run. Whereas a warning, as we had it before, still lets the code compile. Because the syntax is still valid. But this is not valid anymore. So we have to delete this. And for all Java developers, val is the equivalent of the final keyword in Java. It's just made less verbose here to encourage it. Because again, it helps avoiding bugs. You can also see that the underline disappeared because the IDE tries to help us by making it very obvious when we have a var. And it's good practice to start out with val and only change it to var when you actually need to change the value. The next thing we can see is that string and int are light gray. Whenever IntelliJ makes parts of your code light gray, it usually indicates that this is redundant. And when we hover over it, we can see another warning. Explicitly given type is redundant here. This is because Kotlin has a feature called type inference. 
which means that whenever the compiler can see what type of value we try to assign to a variable, we don't have to tell it explicitly, because it already has enough information. So when the compiler sees we create a variable called username and try to assign it to a string, we don't have to tell it that it is a string. So we can remove this, and for int as well. But these variables still have the string and integer type, so we can still not assign our age to a string because it's a type mismatch. And if you ever wonder what type a variable is, you can just click on it and press Ctrl Shift P and it will show you the type of the variable. While we are at it, another very useful shortcut if you ever mess up the formatting like this, you can press Ctrl Alt L and it will rearrange everything. Okay, one more thing. What if we want to print our text in username and not replace it? It's very unlikely, but of course we can do that too. If we want to escape a character like this, we can make a backslash. And when we start this again, it will literally print hello world, my name is $username. But in most cases we don't want to do this. Again, you can find the code for this part in the link in the description box below. The code for the previous part is in the description box of the previous video. And I will also do this for all the upcoming parts. I will give you a homework for this video as well. When we type in int somewhere, just like this, click on it and press Ctrl B or Command B on Mac, we get to its source code. Here we can see a public class int in a file called primitives.kt. This also belongs to the Kotlin standard library and your homework is to scroll all the way up and then just scroll through this file and take a look at what is going on in here. You don't have to understand any of this. Just take a look at it and try to be a bit curious. Take a look at these different classes in here and these different min and max values and the other stuff that is going on in here, like the functions. But again, don't get overwhelmed or frustrated by it. Just take a relaxed look at it and we will then talk about this stuff in the next video. Don't forget to like and share this series if it is helpful and then we will see us in the next part. Take care.